this is Jim Drew. He's been the master behind the robotics out here. He's been helping me out, and uh, he happened to visit Auburn this week and to help us with some stuff. And I thought it would be nice to have him in our video uh, because uh, he was the one who helped us with it. And I'm going to be in your position now, and I'm going to ask him questions where he'll be explaining to you guys what is the brain behind this concept. Uh, so, welcome to Auburn, Jim, and I'd like to appreciate it. And also, what I'd like to see is uh, we can just run through the procedures that we did, and I'll be asking you questions okay. on the way through. So, just uh, start, uh, let's go from scratch, like how do we enable power, how do we strap things, okay. and then we, we have a program done, so, and then we can just help them teach locations in this video, because this video is about them learning how to teach locations and what it actually means. Okay, quick right. overview of the, of the robot. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's powered down, okay. uh, you, you can turn, 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 right. turn power on, and uh, you have to calibrate the robot. Okay, before. how do we do that? Don't do anything. Enable okay. power, uh, you just walk us you through that. You have to uh, enable power, mm -hmm. uh, and you can do that two different ways you can do that. You can uh, type it in on the uh, keyboard, EN space PO, Show you the status. If it's not calibrated, it will tell you. 
back to world. A joint is backwards uh, from world. And, and that's the only thing, one of the things that's really important is to watch where you're at because uh, in the joint uh, XZ plus is down. But if you go to world, which we'll use most, uh, Z plus is up. And then you go to free mode, free up everything you want, and so you can basically handle the robot wherever you want it, and then change location, right? Okay, yes, and, and you free up the joints you want to free. You hit X, it, it frees free up, up X, X and Y, y. and uh, they are free in there, and you can go in and move the robot around easily. And uh, a good real thing about safety on this, uh, never go in there with the comp car on or a program running. Yeah. Put it in manual. Put it in manual. You can't safely go in there to move it around. <laughs> oh. I already told them about safety. So okay. They're going to have to All right. Uh, now, what we're going to do is, since you guys will be writing a program, uh, I'm going to have Jim uh, teach a location and probably run through the sequence of commands that we need to use. So, how about like we just teach a location and use the different commands to go with it? Just an arbitrary location. We don't have to run on the program. That
search location and it gives you a list of locations. And oh, L1, L1? Yeah. L1? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that's, uh, that's our location right there. Okay. If you want more, you can, you can click on Which more. Is the last and button. That, okay. and that, uh, yeah, that lists uh, more locations until you find the one that uh, you're looking for. Okay. But we went through them all, so we'll go back to edit locations. L1. And hit L1, and you'll see here okay. it comes up on your soft key here. Okay. So you'll push uh, here, and uh, since we already, at the location we already taught, it didn't change value, mm -hmm. but you could have moved it and uh, hit here. And, and, uh, well, that's the easiest way to do it. And we have, can also do it with the computer using the PO command. Uh, yes, that's a, that's a one way of doing it, but you have to be careful when okay. you do that. Okay. Uh, PO command is, means position. Mm -hmm. You can type in PO space and L1 if you want to change L1. And if you want to change the X value, you look at your number and, and it's in millimeters. So if you know, you have to know if you want to go X or Y or Z uh, in that position. So if you want to, if you don't want to change x, x is the first value, y is the second one, and z is the last, the next Good. one. Yeah. So if you want to change c, you don't want to change x and y, you hit comma, comma. Comma means I don't want to change uh, x, another comma means I don't want to change y. And then z, if you can change your value uh, by tapping in the number that you want, and however you want to change it. <coughs> So, but you have to know which direction you're going, and uh, yeah. So it's better to do it this way. It's better to do it yeah. this way. It's, it's, it's not. Yep. So let's go ahead and let's get okay. the location. And then we caught the location and, and changed it. Yep. And uh, <coughs> now, uh, uh, how about we use this and move it to a different line? Okay. You know, what commands do we use when we have to move between locations? Uh, you guys might have to watch this closely because this is a very important part of programming. Uh, you need to follow the sequence in order to make sure that you don't crash into any of those. Is that right? right. They, they have to make sure that your program is perfect and also use these commands in uh, the way it's supposed to be when you're here programming just in case. There's so two, ways, two ways to do it. You can, uh, you can use a pen <coughs> and go to world, Z. Okay. From this point it would be plus. Thank you. 
from a previous location, the first thing you do is depart. Right. And when you depart, it moves up and Z. You want to get up to a so safe location. So, so it moves up and Z. The 50 cents moves up and Z. Moves up and Z. Oh, okay. when you depart. Always up and Z. Okay. Uh, so now since we departed and it's clear from hitting any of the parts of the assembly, right. now we can move to the next location. Yeah, and if you don't have that location taught, you have to uh, manually either manually move it. Okay. Or Say we have some other location there. If you already got a location taught over there okay. and you want to reteach it, you can uh, do an approach move. Is okay. that what you want? Yeah, but then we, since we don't have any locations, do I put it in a free mode? Probably have another location. Right. Okay. Well, I'll watch back in free mode now, and we're going to put it in a different location. Just move it here, say, since you, can you see it now? So that I, okay. So this would be location two, and now we use the tier command. Say LQ. Right. Okay. Okay. So we don't have to change that. Okay. So we got two, two locations, Bob. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now, how, we, how do we move between these locations and what are the sequence? That's really what they need to know because their programming okay. is going to be strong only based on this structure. To, to try it out, uh, right now you're at your second top location. Okay. So you want to, you're assuming, we're assuming that uh, the grip is open, the grip is not open, so okay. we want to open the gripper. Okay. Uh, so we're going to do a new command, okay. uh, O, P, E, N, I. Okay. Uh, the I is on there for immediate. Immediate, okay. So I was about to ask you that. And Comfort. it'll tell you if you're not in cop mode. Yeah. <laughs> so it happens all the time. It will repeat what you just typed. The last the previous up, command. Up arrow key. Up arrow key. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, that opened the gripper. So <coughs> depending on where we pick and where we place, we need the open eye and close eye. Yeah, and the grip should have, well, it, it would have been uh, closed <coughs> for teaching the part if we're dropping the part there. Uh, so now we're going to uh, do the part. Okay. Well, we can go, uh, go 50. It doesn't have to be 50, it could be 30. Any, any distance is safe to clear. Yeah. And uh, now we can... Uh, uh, after depart, what do we do? Do we directly move it to the next, after next location? If we've already got the other location taught in, we can approach that location uh, under power okay. by uh, using a command called do approach and, and you put an S on the APPROS, that's a straight line move. Okay. If you do not do a straight line move, I mean, you can you can use a pro, but it could the robot could swing out, could hit the guard, or another obstacle. So it's always safer better to use a straight, straight line, straight line motion. Right. So we want to do pros, uh, L1, 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 come on, So for the approach, the 50 you're saying might be along X or Y, maybe necessarily, right? Or is it supposed to be Z, the 50 that you specified for this? Your approach is uh, 50 millimeters above this top location that you previously taught. Okay. It's always above the location that you're specifying here. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, always uh, keep your hand here and e-stop button yeah. just in case. So. Yeah. I've hit Turn there, and uh, that should go over and stop uh, 50 millimeters above. Yep. <coughs> and then, uh, if you're, uh, then see, are we picking the part here or are we placing it? Uh, so, typically, uh, we're placing it. Okay, depending it on that, we'll be, we'll be placing it here. So, yep. you come down and open the gripper, right? Yep. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> we, we want to typically. Placing it here, we pick it over there, we close our gripper, we come over, and, and the grip should be closed right now mm -hmm. on the part. So we're, we're just. We're, uh, that's fine. That's all safe. We're just, we're just saying that the, <coughs> the gripper is closed. And we'll, uh, if, if you want to teach it, <coughs> reteach it here, you will, uh, from this point, or if you just want to try it, you can move to that location.
information okay. if you know you're pretty close. Mm -hmm. If you want to reteach it, which is what we're, we're doing here, you go into world, Z, and you might want to push slow here because uh, you don't want to hit the part. You don't want to, you don't want to come down crashing on it. So you'll come down and you're, you'll say, uh, okay, it looks like it needs to go that way in Y. So you'll uh, go in world Y <coughs> and uh, that way the right hand rule is Y minus. And you can see how much you move it if you want to push display, world locations, uh, it'll display your X, Y, and Z locations and tell you in millimeters. And if you want to record that number, say, I want to go back to where I was, <coughs> you can write that number down uh, and, and, and go back to it if, if necessary. But uh, we want to move it in Y minus, so I'm going to move it quite a bit so you see it. So you can move it to in Y minus and you say, okay, I got it lined up now. And uh, <coughs> now I can uh, go in Z and, uh, and come on down. Uh, again, Z minus will take you on down and say, okay, I got it lined up now. Once yeah. you get it lined up and then in your pocket, uh, you can uh, <coughs> uh, teach it. Edit it here or teach it over there? Yeah, edit the location. You edit, edit location, location and, and there you have an option that says there L1. You, there's your option. And, and L1 is what we taught here. Yeah. And so. And then you have an option to say here, so just a click on it. Click on so here. So teach that. And then we taught that L1 location. So let me rephrase this. So when we move between two locations, first thing we do is depart from the old location to the current location and then approach the next location and then finally move to the next location. Is that right? right? So or tweak it in or put it in manual and yeah, drop yeah. it in and teach it. Okay. Don't, if, if, don't move to it if you're trying to teach it. And also <coughs> in our program we had like timers and break commands and uh, bait timers and all that. Can you just elaborate where we need to use it in this sequence right. so that it's they get the sense of that? It's important to use a, a break uh, before or after an approach move because what a brake does it allows the robot to fully come to that location before it goes to the next move <coughs> excuse me and uh, so we we'll use a brake a statement after the approach move and then once you do the final move to that location you want to use a timer it's better to use a timer because you can adjust the timer to any oh. uh, value of time that you want. Can Middle we just show this an example of timer we have in our program? Just show yeah. you what the sequence is. After that, you do a timer because the part needs to open the gripper, close the gripper. The gripper the has to have time to open or close. And place the part. So, so when you use a timer, why do you have to like put it to zero? And what, what timers, there, there are 16 timers in the Adept Robot, mm -hmm. and uh, they're all just continually running. Okay. So you want to set your timer to zero, and then... Uh, that's the sequence. Like after you put a timer, you put a wait timer. It says what timer it is. And yes, and, one. and yeah, timer one, for instance, mm -hmm. equals zero. You're setting that timer one to zero, and then the time that you put in wait timer one, and you want to put uh, uh, put it in parentheses and uh, greater or equal to uh, in whatever value you want out here. Point five is what we're using right now, or half a second. Yeah. <coughs> So half so a second is a good time, probably. Uh, it is. Now, if speed is a factor, mm -hmm. later on you can cut that time down. You might want it in real life, you might want it at 0.1 or 0.2 seconds. Okay, just for a second, you have to wait there and then do the thing. Right, just for the instant, mm -hmm. you know, intensity. So now, how do you, like, store the program? We can finish up this video with that. I know it's okay. just getting a lot.
longer. So uh, we can just finish yeah. up by how we can save the program so that students can know what right. they actually do. Once, you, once yeah. you finish your program, you want to use uh, F4 and, uh, to exit out. And, um, and uh, you can see the dot prompt up here, you can hit return. And, okay. and, uh, uh, and now if a program is running, there'll be an asterisk out there. Uh, so there's no program running, so you can store okay. uh, what you, the command you want to just store your program, your location. Yeah, store so the program store with the location, like it's one program. You, you can actually, uh, guys, you can store the program separately with the locations separately, or you can save it all as one file. Right. So what if they just save it as one file? Okay. For now, we let us let us just give them that. So they just save it as say maybe uh, student one dot v two is the name right. of the program, and then you have the locations for that program and the whole program in that file. Everything will be there. So it's store <laughs> and the name of the program dot v two. Yeah, dot dot v two. Uh, the dot v two is optional. It okay. defaults to v two. Okay. So you could just uh, uh, type in store okay. space student one or whatever your name is. You want if it's Tom or Sue. Uh, <laughs> You could you could use your name okay. and uh, put Tom in there, mm -hmm. and, and that way you, you would know. But it'll default, and, and uh, to make sure it's there, uh, you can do a FDIR, and that uh, is a file directory, and it shows you what's on that file directory or what's on hard drive. Okay. FDIR, hit enter, and Not there's program. a whole list of programs here, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you can look and see if your file is there, and if it if it's not there, it didn't make it there. You did something wrong. Mm -hmm. If it's there, if it was already there previously, and you made a change and wanted to, it will not overwrite. So you must uh, delete your file. Okay. If you named it Tom, you'd do a F D E L space Tom dot V two and hit enter. And it'll ask you, are you sure? And type in Y, and enter. And then you can restore it in there. But it'll tell you if it already exists. It'll say already, file already exists. Okay. So I think I think that's basically it. And uh, yep. guys, we try to make this video as short as possible, but this is the important part of programming. So just why, and since we had Jim here, I really have to thank Jim for this and uh, being part of the video. So we just wanted to make it as one big video. And him being here helped me ask questions from you guys, like like one of you guys. And so I think that will make this video a lot better and easier to understand. So thank you, Jim, once again. Uh, guys, hope Everybody. you get the get the idea of what we're talking about. And thanks, Yamu, for the camera work. Thanks. Appreciate it. Good luck. Good luck, folks.